Today, we're sitting down with Arthi and Sri Ram, legendary Silicon Valley power couple and my friends who run a very awesome YouTube channel. I used to host a show with them on the live platform Clubhouse back in the lockdowns. Sri Ram is a legend investor at Andreessen Horowitz and Arthi is chief product and technology officer at startups like Commerce Hub and Rhythm. Their stories into tech are incredible stories of immigrant grit, determination, and just plain being smart. Today, we're talking about their journeys to the heart of tech. So I grew up in India, in a city called Chennai. If you think of India as the points on a campus, Chennai is a major but sleepy city. It's in the south. I would say we are known for food, for chess, and a lot of nerdy people actually uh, come from Chennai. I'm really proud of it. Our parents are like lower middle class. They did everything they could to just give us a good education. Both Shriram and I, we begged and pleaded to get our first computers. We had like very similar stories. We finally got a computer. Mine was a Windows 3.1 and got into DOS and DOS programming pretty quickly. And, you know, it was just amazing. When I finished high school, I, you know, I begged and pleaded and, you know, shed some tears with my dad. And about a year of doing this, I convinced him to buy me a personal computer, a Pentium 3, which only probably five people listening to this understand that reference. And we got that. And what I would do late night, even without an internet connection, was I would get these used books on Visual Basic and teaching yourself HTML and JavaScript. I would teach myself how to write code. What's funny is this is exactly what I did in Fremont, California, growing up. We didn't have money to spend for the books themselves, so I'd go to the local bookstore Barnes & Noble and sit in the computer section for hours trying to read and remember things. I read in those books just so that I could get back to my computer and try it out. And guess what? It worked. And it was cheap. Did that for six months and then, you know, went back to my dad and back and pleaded and got what was called a dial-up internet connection. Kids, you have no idea how easy you have it. We had to plug this thing into the phone line and we used the internet. Nobody could be on the phone. And if somebody picked up the phone, well, that was the end of your browsing sessions. We got this crappy dial-up connection and my dad would always yell at me for running up phone bills. But every night I would, I was a nerdy kid. I was shy. I was not, I was not exactly vocal, but every night I would stay up and I would go online and it was a entirely different universe for me. And I like to tell people that all the good things in my life happened because of the internet. I remember exactly the same thing happening to me early. I knew the internet was gonna be super big and now today it's here. But if you're young and just getting started, don't worry, there's a moment happening in tech right now called AI. When I was 21 years old, I, you know, actually 20 years old, I met Arthi who's standing over there online because we were trying to build this website. We met each other over a chat app and we were what 2023 would call Anon, but back then we just used names. And we would chat every night and we bonded over our shared love for computer science and algorithms and nerdy movies and that worked out before swiping right was a thing. I came to the US uh, in 2007 on a very cold winter day in Seattle. Um, so my story, I have a master's in computer science and uh, a year before I graduated, Microsoft gave me a job offer and it was totally random. I was in no way qualified at that time, I think. I just totally lucked out. I wrote this blog post with somebody senior at Microsoft wound up seeing, which wound up me and also Arthi you know, eventually getting hired and spent a couple of years there. And then, you know, Microsoft wanted to move us to Redmond where you know, they are, they were and still are headquartered. This is was a big deal. Often the very first moment of breaking into tech is about hustling your way in, to be noticed however you can, even if there isn't a front door that you can see. They don't really do campus placements for us. So we've hustled, both me and Shriram, we both hustled our way into getting an interview, got an offer, got a job at Microsoft, convinced our college that we should be working full time even before we graduated. And at Microsoft in India, they, we got transferred to the Seattle, the Redmond office, which is where the mothership is. And since I think when we first met when we were kids, we've always wanted to come to Silicon Valley, always wanted to go build companies and wanted to be here as part of this ecosystem. And so 
We came to Seattle in 2007. Immigrants, we get the job done. It's an incredible thing for people to uproot their entire lives to come to a new land to create something brand new from nothing. That was exactly their story. I had never really been outside of India before. My English was okay, but not super great. And I remember, you know, coming here, and I was so intimidated because I felt like so new. I felt so lost. I, I remember, I, I, it's kind of a funny, weird story. Redmond is kind of a really sleepy town, which only has Microsoft buildings out there. And I show up on the first day, they put up, they usually put up these new people in this motel for a few days before you find an apartment. And in the motel, there's like a 15 feet sleepy street with no cars. And you have to get to the outside of the street to get to the Microsoft building. And I could not figure out how to cross the street. Because in India, you don't have a concept of pressing a button and waiting for the light to switch. And I was terrified of going to jail on my first day in the United States of America. And uh, I was so intimidated and we didn't have a car, we didn't have a license. But on the other hand, I also felt so exhilarated because for, I think me, you know, growing up, the United States was this amazing idea and was this inspirational vision. And, you know, the India will always be home and always be family. But, you know, when we grew up, you know, we used to watch the NBA or we used to watch Pirates of Silicon Valley or we used to watch all these things. And we're like, we want to be a part of that, right? I think when Sharam and I first started dating, one of the first movies that we saw was this pirated version of Pirates of Silicon Valley. And there, the Steve Jobs character basically starts the movie with, if you could make a dent in the universe, why won't you? Why won't you take the chance? It sounds so cheesy, <clears throat> but that really resonated with us. And we realized that there were not that many people and that same cohort of people really liked building and starting stuff. And Seattle was great. We spent six years at Microsoft, which for people who've been at Microsoft is like a drop in the ocean, right? And so it felt so exciting to be there, even though I couldn't really get around. And the thing I remember is, you know, when I was outside, I couldn't drive a car, so I had to walk everywhere in the cold in Seattle. You didn't have a credit card for a while. But then I would walk inside a Microsoft building and the sign. And I then I felt at home immediately because there I was like I know how to do this I know how to speak the language everyone there respected me I know I'm good with computers and that grounded me that gave me some confidence and for a lot of people watching this you know I think it's interesting because you could really feel a, a, like a fish out of water you could feel intimidated maybe you don't speak the language you have an accent you don't have the same academic credentials you're just in a different country but what really helped me then was when I would walk inside a meeting and there'll be some you know something about uh, visual studio or whatever technical thing I was like oh I know that like that I know I don't know how to actually go do grocery shopping but that I know and that kind of grounded me and built confidence but it was crazy I remember Arthi and I when she moved it was snowing in Seattle it never snowed and we had to walk a mile to do groceries because we didn't have a car yet and, and India does not have snow most of India does not have snow that was a, it was a very formative it builds character is what I would say can you imagine being a stranger in a strange land? But you came here for the same reason millions of other people did, an idea of prosperity and opportunity. And what is more American than Silicon Valley? It's that ability to create technology from nothing. I think Silicon Valley holds the same role for a lot of people, essentially being, I think two things, one, a beacon for people around the world. It's interesting because a lot of people here in Silicon Valley can sometimes be cynical about this place and maybe right, maybe wrong. But if you step outside, this place is a beacon. Everywhere I go, it be it Europe, the UK, India, they're like, we, how do we recreate our version of that? And the fact that, you know, we can attract talent from all the world is amazing. The second part was like when I landed there, I, you know, I, it was amazing because I could, one, mix with people from all over the world from different backgrounds, people from China, people from the Philippines, obviously a lot of people from the United States. And we all had incredibly different backgrounds. We all had the shared, shared love for technical language. We all nerd out about Star Trek, right? Or we all nerd out about, you know, some debates, um, you know, um, dynamically typed languages versus statically typed languages or, you know, what other thing du jour was. The other amazing thing about Microsoft, which I think Silicon Valley and tech has today, was you could pretty much email anybody. That Sri Ram did this is Seriously, pretty awesome. I remember working at Microsoft in 2003 to 2005 and not doing this, and I wish I did. If you're watching this now and you're inside big tech or any startup, know that you have a lot to gain from just asking for access. The worst people can do is say no, and that generally costs you nothing. 
you could eat and they had so many tech luminaries who just worked there and since you were inside you could just you were like a random 21 year old kid and you could email someone who is a, is a really famous person and they would definitely respond and they often take the time to meet you and so we got to go in there and learn a lot one of our mentors was this guy who'd built every device emulator on the planet and so we learned so much on just writing good software architecture and being humble one thing that we learned a lot from microsoft people were like they were doing really amazing things but they always stayed under the radar and were super humble i never really identified as a founder but i also identified myself as an engineer as a builder you know of things it's slightly different way to come at the same thing and one of the people i really idolized outside of steve jobs which we talked about or some of the others is a guy named david cutler dave cutler and for folks who don't know who he is dave cutler is probably one of the greatest computer programmers of the 20th century he is the father of modern operating systems he built a bunch of them including windows nt which powers every windows machine out there and he's really you know a legend and he's about you know even at the time when i joined he was in his late 60s maybe early 70s so two things right for example like john carmack today or uh, nor jeff dean or somebody along that pantheon and cutler you know scared the shit out of everybody and one day i would you know i would email him and I, and you know and he would not respond and i remember two things from dave cutler the first was the guy was 70 you know he had ridiculous infinite amounts of money he had been max for 20 years but he would show up at work every single day and you could see his check-ins in code you would have check-ins every single day right including i think december 24th including weekends and i was like huh this is what it takes right if you want to get to greatness the guy just shows up and does the work and what i did is you know i was like i need to meet this guy so about a couple of years i was like i'm going to hang around so i would show up like earlier and earlier on saturdays and sundays when he showed up and when he was like who's this random kid and he invited me in and we struck up a conversation and i got to know him a little bit so and that would not have happened if i was not there and great things come out of these interactions so max was very good to me and it's amazing that you know we as a community uh, uh as an industry can hopefully still continue to attract talent from all over the world to the United States. I think the the immigration experience is just it's it's brutal. You come in, you think you're here, you think you're adding value, you're paying taxes, you're doing all the things right and then one day you can just get booted out and I think that's really hard. So once we got our green cards there was no looking back. I was like I am not wasting this chance and I am moving to Silicon Valley no matter what. So I came here it was one of the earliest PMs on Netflix this was when they were moving from DVD into streaming so my job was to build the streaming player software the SDK that goes into TVs and set up boxes and Blu-ray players and it was a lot of fun I got to travel to Japan and meet all these electronics makers and Samsung and Sony and Toshiba and all these folks and learned a lot just building software and then it was time I was like I'm done I'm leaving and I quit and uh, started two companies Arthi had to take a big leap of faith to start her first startup. It wasn't that easy to just decide one day. When you leave a team like Netflix or Microsoft, your bosses come to you just to see if you're really serious and just maybe they think they'll try and convince you not to. I remember telling my manager at Netflix, yeah, his name is Scott. I was like, "Scott, I'm 29. I really have to go start a company." And he was like, "Okay." and I was like I'm so old all my peers everybody else like early 20s they're all out there building things like look at Mark Zuckerberg look at everybody else and I'm so old and he just started laughing at me and he's like you have a good job Netflix is going to be doing really good things and at that time honestly like it was not set in stone right Netflix is a very small company but he was right this was a special team I really like Netflix culture They were off in the small office in Los Gatos, just building really fun things. I worked with the encoding teams, and it's just one of the best technologies I've seen. So, no doubt about that. But I was like, I can always come back if I really wanted to. But if I didn't do a startup now, I would always regret it. So I wasn't that smart or didn't think through it that well. I basically one day just showed up and quit, and I was like, I just got to go. If I do this at thirty, I'd always be like, why didn't I do it in my twenties? and it, at that time 29 and 30 felt like such a big gap now i laugh about it but i'm really glad i took the chance back then so in 2013 arthi took the leap and applied to y combinator that's where i first met her we got through the interview we came in and i basically killed myself the previous night just building this website right i was like i am going to have this like fully functioning website Having a demo is a very very good idea when applying for Y Combinator. I know I rely on it almost every time. I showed up 
there was this like five minute interview you guys there was so much going on it was also like late afternoonish there was just frenzy everyone was like pacing about and yeah i think the team asked a bunch of questions we answered but we weren't really sure i can't even remember what was being asked it was all such a blur and then they knocked on the door i remember this knock on the door and everyone was standing up and i was like you have to look at my website you have to look at my website and everybody started walking out being like please just you're out of time and you turned around and you were like okay show me your website and i was like oh thank god like uh-huh. I, <laughs> and i showed him i showed you the website and i scroll scrolled and i like showed you a bunch of the call to actions and you were like this is a nicely done website and you are you have really good design skills and we always knew that we were like if you have to impress gary you have to have good design skills and since you had said that i went out being like i think we may have a shot at this there's a big reason why i love the demo it shows you what you're capable of My favorite Steve Jobs quote is actually this one. When you're a carpenter making a beautiful chest of drawers, you're not going to use a piece of plywood on the back even though it faces the wall and nobody will ever see it. You know it's there. So you're going to use a beautiful piece of wood on the back for you to sleep well at night. The aesthetic, the quality has to be carried all the way through. That's why a demo matters a lot to me. game recognize game builders recognize builders the next round was with pg and jessica and i got into a big fight with them because pg was like this idea is never going to work and i was like how can you say that and i just started but they were i think pg was like trying to rile me up and i totally fell for it and we did this whole back and forth and then at some point pg stops and looks at jessica and smiles and i'm like i just totally fell for this thing So got through YC. That was great. That was just such a great experience. Learned a lot. That company, the second one was basically a big failure. We basically ended up not being able to raise money. The first round of fundraise was so hard. It took me about a year to raise 800k. Arthi's first startup got acquired, but her second didn't work out. And that's how it works in tech. Even if it's not perfect, things work out. She went on to become director of product for communities at Facebook, head of international for Clubhouse and chief product officer for multiple startups. Shri Ram too had and is having a legendary rise in his career, going from Microsoft Azure to lead product for Facebook, Snap, and then Twitter. I'm really glad to call both of them friends, especially after countless hours talking late at night. about tech during the lockdowns in 2020 on Clubhouse. My favorite question for guests on this channel as you know is often what advice do you have for the 20-year-old version of yourself? Here's what they said. So I will say the first thing I would go back and tell my 20-year-old self is things are going to be okay. I think a lot of people at that age feel tremendous pressure, anxiety. I definitely did. And I was in a very different part of the world. I wasn't sure how it was going to happen, what is going to happen, whether I was going to make it for some definition of make it. I would always say, "Hey, things are going to be okay." I think more than the things that I wish I had done that I wasn't doing, what I would tell myself then is, "You're doing something very right. Don't stop doing it. Do not alter the timeline." I totally agree with this. If I could tell myself from 20 years one thing. It's this. You're smart, you're talented, and it's not going to be a straight line, but you got this. When you eat really junk food, your body feels it, or if you just kind of, you know, on TikTok for an hour, you feel like okay, this is not a good use of time. On the hand, if you eat healthy or you watch like a or you listen to a very insightful podcast or get a documentary, you also feel good about it. I do think when I was then, I could intuitively sense the activities I was doing that was leading to long-term value and was long-term good for me and the ones that weren't even though society didn't think so at the time so for example at the time you know i was hanging out on all these user message boards online i was writing code by myself trust me nobody understood what i was doing that was not a thing online companies were not a thing as much as they are now but it felt right and i i found my tribe i found my community i found conference and here's this thing that i'm good at and even though the career prospects at the time was not the same as it is now and i would tell myself can you doing that because some of those people that you meet then turn into lifelong friends collaborators i want up working with them meeting them some of them are luminaries that i emailed and i got to meet many years later so i would say you know can you doing that and the reason i say these things is for those of you in that age group 
you may be in a very different part of the world or different part of this country with very different means and constraints and you know uh, very different situations at home but if you are doing things which feel healthy if you are learning if you are making yourself better a little bit every single day and i trust me when you do you feel it and you're finding a good supportive tribe of people you want to latch on to that usually good things happen now it's easy to hear that advice and just say why would someone reply but there's a secret here if you're a builder like attracts like so you should build i talk to a lot of young folks who like ask for advice and i'm like but go build things like just ship something if you can write code build things create things if you are good at art do put yourself out there and just really good things happen from just doing that you can just do so much by just being creative and just being productive than just being a consumer as such and i think all the risks that in your head right now that you're so anxious about in 10 years it will be completely meaningless like your peer group your cohort of people who would say what like all of that just goes away because best case scenario you do really well they'd be happy to be your friends worst case scenario people have their own stuff going they'll just forget about you anyway like you're not that important so just take the chance take the risk and just do a lot of the crazier things in like career being ambitious all of that early on because it does get harder to do a lot of that later because you just have a lot more commitments obligations everything else it's not impossible but it will like there's more friction so just put yourself out there more and whatever that means for you if you're in tech you should do just everything about who your peer group is what they like follow what they build that kind of thing pick the latest greatest thing and go build stuff i think the other thing i would tell my 20 year old self is go seek out heat and what i mean by heat is some of the best moments in my career have happened because i started to hang out with people who were just really good at what they were doing and even though the job was hard and maybe i wasn't always as successful as i wished to be just being around the best of the best elevates you because it shows you two things one it shows you what is possible but two is also it removes the mythology from some of these celebrities and say they are only human so for example for me the first year at facebook i hung out there everyone there at the, at that time was top tier at what they did every engineer was the best in the world you are the best compiler people the best database people and mark zuckerberg and his team are really good at what they did so one you were like you could tell that's what it takes right you're like that's what i need to do to get there you could and i think unless you see the top tier up close you can't figure out how to get there the second part is you also see how they're human right you don't mythologize them and some people sometimes they listen to people like us and you or youtube and our arc seems so perfect and clean but it's not and we're messy and we have insecurities and issues and when you see these people you're like oh yeah that person you know they had that weird time or they have the temper or they have this thing and it makes you go like, okay i can also do this and i think and sometimes when i've done that and i've been around great people i think early facebook was one i definitely think you know my um, you know my role now at a6 is another you know it just pushes you forward because it shows you okay that's what it's going to take to be the very best in what you do so i would tell myself even back then to be like okay if you're not being surrounded by amazing people get yourself in a situation either geographically or at least online where you're surrounded by people of the very best at what they do one of the biggest superpowers i have seen from both shri ram and arthi is to be able to seek that network and this doesn't come for free it takes real action on your part now i generally think i wish i'd done more of this when i was a little bit younger but also i tell people this all the time a couple of things one is that one of the beautiful things about the technology industry and this doesn't exist with finance doesn't exist with hollywood is that anybody would meet you and any luminary will meet you and it's because not just purely because you're altruistic i think one it's the culture of the place we live in second is everyone has heard the stories about turning on a meeting with a mark young mark zuckerberg or larry page and they know that if you reach out they can't take the chance of being this guy or, or the person who just turns on a meeting with a great founder so you can use it to advantage and one one thing i've always done over my career and was to just reach out to people and that could be through a, a well structured cold email that could be through a dm any number of things and one of the i think two things about our world one is all the smartest best people are often public they may be on twitter they may be on instagram they may be on youtube they may be on github offered uh, or this you know the emails are pretty hard to find and they're almost always responsive so that's number one so you know which is not often true in a bunch of other industries the second part of it is it is very easy to have a public portfolio 
of your work. I will guarantee you that if you are a young person and you have an interesting GitHub profile or an interesting body of tweets, you send a DM and email to Gary, to me, to Arthi, we will probably respond it's because we understood the systems and we want to pay it back. And, you know, I wish I'd done a lot more of that. So that's number one. The second thing I think I realized, you know, a little early on was when you meet some of these incredible world leaders, right? You know, the Bill Gates, I met Mark Andreessen when I was very young, was I realized that you have to bring some value to them when you meet them. Because you just can't be like mentor me or you just can't be give me advice. That's great. But you have to kind of bring some value. And what I realized was like what you what worked for me was telling, explaining to them my little corner of the world. So for example, when I was in cloud computing, I would talk to people, I'd be like, hey, this is how early days of Azure really worked. And they'd be like, huh, I didn't know that. And you realize that some of these most successful people are always seeking out information and trying to one, reach out to people all the time, being not ashamed of putting yourself out there. Second, having a public portfolio of your work. So people can just Google you and be like, oh, this person seems interesting. Like I should, you know, definitely at least reply, if not grab a coffee. And the third is when you do meet them, trying to, without any agenda, offer value. If just not, hey, let me just explain to you how my little corner of the world works with this paper I just saw. People love that. And if you keep doing that, I found that, you know, if you keep doing these things in this infinite game, things just start compounding. You make, meet more and more interesting people, you get invited to the right dinners, you show up in the right signal groups, and before you know it, you go from outsider to insider in a way I think no other industry or community can get you in. Arthi and Sriram exemplify this incredible immigrant spirit, this accelerationist immigrant spirit in tech. They have an amazing YouTube channel and podcast you should listen to. Link in the description below. Yes, you should please definitely subscribe my podcast. It's in uh, the Arthi and Sriram show. But I want to hear from you. And I guarantee you that anybody who sends me a DM, an email, a smoke signal from this, I will respond to you. Especially, you know, if you're in some of the age groups and some going through some of the themes that we are talking about. I may not be able to meet you in person, but I'll respond to you. So my call to action for you is reach out to me at Sriram K, um, you know, Sriram at SriramK.com, SriramKDacing.com. There are a million ways to find me online. But reach out to me and I want to hear from everybody here. That's it for this week. I'm trying a new format, which is sort of like a hybrid podcast that's heavily edited, like a narrative. And I have to thank Andrew Mason and Descript for making a pretty sweet AI video editor that allows me to do all of this similar to a word processor. And you just saw the output. So let me know if you like it. Let me know in the comments below. If you liked it, don't forget to click like, subscribe, and the bell icon so you can get all of these. Is there stuff that you want to hear from me? Are there guests that you love to see on this channel? Please let me know. I'll see you next time.